the mole is a count. It is a number of things, just like the word dozen is always 12 of something. One mole is always 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those something. I can be talking about atoms. I can be talking about bananas. I can be talking about pencils. One mole of that uh, atom, item, one mole of that item is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those items. If I'm looking at a chemical formu formula, let's start with something simple like water. The H2O, the two subscript, means there are two atoms of hydrogen for every one atom of oxygen. Since the mole is just a huge number of these atoms, we can also say there are two moles of hydrogen atoms for every one mole of oxygen atoms. That's now an equivalence we can use for this particular formula. Now, the hydrogen to oxygen ratio in this formula is 2 to 1. 2 moles of hydrogen equals 1 mole of oxygen. This is an equivalence that is pertinent for this particular formula. A different formula involving hydrogens and oxygens may have a different equivalence. But regardless, I can use this equivalence to convert between moles of one element in a compound to moles of another element in a compound. For example, the formula for copper 2 sulfate is this. In this particular formula, there's one copper atom for every one sulfur atom for every four oxygen atoms. So now I have a couple of equivalences I can write for this. One mole of copper equals one mole of sulfur. One mole of copper equals four moles of oxygen. One mole of sulfur equals four moles of oxygen. So all of those are equivalences. So for example, if I have a sample of copper sulfate, copper 2 sulfate, and I know how many moles of copper there are, I can calculate how many moles of oxygen, elemental oxygen atoms, I would see in that sample. All right, this problem may seem a little construed to you, and, and it sort of is, but it demonstrates the fact that we can calculate from moles of one element in a compound to moles of an, an, another element in a compound. It's just a unit conversion problem. How many moles of O equals 4.8 moles of Cu times, and my ratio sign, moles of Cu on bottom, moles of O on top so that I'm left with it, and my equivalence is the mole to mole ratio in this particular formula. One mole of Cu, four moles of oxygen, and then all I have left to do is punch it in my calculator. My calculator tells me the answer is 19.2. I want to always round to the correct number of sig figs, so how about 19 moles of oxygen? Now probably what's more useful using this, um, this technique is to convert between grams and grams of the elements in a compound. And you already know how to go between moles and grams, and so this would just be an extension of that. Recall that one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, but one mole is also, if you have an element x, the number of grams of x using the molar mass on the periodic table. So I can convert between grams of one element in a compound and grams of another element in a compound using the formula, using the, 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 the subscripts on the formula to go from one to the other. So let's see where we would use this relationship in a specific example. Um, sugar, sucrose, is C6H12O6. All right, let's say we have a sample of sugar, and we know how many grams of oxygen were used to produce that sugar, and we were interested in how many grams of hydrogen that would be. All right, again, this may seem a little contrived, and it sort of is, but it does demonstrate the technique. I want to know how many grams of hydrogen, are equal to 14.8 grams of oxygen. Now you'll notice that I'm using the elements here because I'm not talking about a sample of O2 or a sample of H2. I'm talking about the oxygen and hydrogen contained in this formula. So I'm talking about the individual atoms that go to make up this formula. So grams to moles for oxygen. It is useful to go ahead and completely label the units here. A grams to moles for oxygen is using the molar mass from the periodic table, and one mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams. You always want to use the molar mass that has at least two decimal places 
um, even more if you want to because we don't want to be short on our sig figs. Our grams of oxygen will cancel. Our next step is to convert between moles of oxygen and moles of hydrogen. This is what we demonstrated on the last screen. For this formula, there is a relationship between the moles of oxygen and moles of hydrogen. There are 12 moles of hydrogen for every 6 moles of oxygen. Now, yes, that does reduce down, and you can reduce it down to 2 to 1, but why bother? It is 12 to 6 in the formula, and so if you work this problem out and you come back and look at it a month later, you're not going to question where you got your numbers if you go ahead and write the 12 and the 6. Numerically, if you wrote it as 2 to 1, you'd get the same answer, but you might be confused when you come back to look at it later. I need one more step because I'm going to grams of hydrogen, so I need moles of hydrogen on bottom to cancel, grams of hydrogen on top. This is the molar mass of hydrogen from the periodic table, and one mole is 1.01 grams. I punch this in my calculator. My calculator gives me the unrounded value, and I'm always going to use the correct number of sig figs. Almost always, if you go back to the original number given in the problem, that's how many sig figs your answer is going to have. Typically, any conversion factors you use along the way should have at least that many sig figs, if not more. So how about 1.87 grams of hydrogen for our answer? This leads us to the next sort of realization about the formula here. In a sample that has 14.8 grams of oxygen, there would be 1.87 grams of hydrogen. What I might want to know is, well, how many grams of sucrose, sugar, would that be altogether? So how many grams of C6H12O6 would that be if I have, uh, what was the original, 14.8 grams of oxygen? All right, I can work it starting from here. Again, I need to convert from grams of oxygen. That'll be on bottom. The key to converting amongst different elements in a formula or the formula and the element itself is moles, and so I will always go through moles. Almost all of our conversions involving formula are going to involve the mole stuff. Just get used to it. So 1 over 16, that's the molar mass from the periodic table, and my grams of oxygen cancels. My next step, I would need moles of oxygen on bottom. Um, I'm trying to go to C6H12O6, so I'll have moles of C6H12O6 on top. And again, because that's what I'm trying to go to. Now, my conversion factor here is that there are six moles of oxygen in one of these formulas. So six moles goes with the oxygen, one goes with the mole for the formula. My moles of oxygen now cancels, and I'm again trying to find grams. One more step, moles of C6H12O6 on bottom, and grams of C6H12O6 on top, and this is the molar mass. The molar mass is 180.18, and all I have left to do is to punch it in my calculator. Again, I will need to round the answer correctly. For the rest of your life, you need to do that. And I'm getting 27.8 grams of C6H12O6 for my answer.